How's it going guys? Cameron here with Canadian Gamer coming at you with another video. Now today we are going to roast gaming off the grid. Yes, that's right. We're going to roast these guys. These two guys, one guy's name is Wes and I think the other guy's name is Roberto. We're not exactly going to roast them, okay? We're going to have a candid discussion, okay? These guys put out a video today, top five hot takes, okay? And we're going to go over their hot takes in just a minute and I'm going to try to debunk, I guess, their thoughts and opinions on the matter. Now, I don't necessarily disagree with all of their hot takes, but with one of them in particular, it's, it's a bit iffy. So if you haven't checked out Gaming Off The Grid, I will leave a link to their video in the description below. I don't think those guys are huge fans of yours truly. I don't know why that is. I don't know. Maybe because I'm outspoken or I keep it real on the channel. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just assuming. I'm just assuming. Okay. I don't stick to the the form the, the Metal Jesus Rocks formula. I just sort of march to the beat of my own drum. So not not everybody digs that style of content creation. I get it. I get it. So, uh, their first hot take, I got it all up on a screen over here because if not, I'll, I'll forget one of them. Their first hot take is a sim racers suck. So these guys are going on about how sim racers are extremely slow. They're boring. They're not fun. In the same breath, they talk about how they have no problem with arcade racers. Okay, that, that's Shades of Metal Jesus Rocks, okay? These guys are buddies with them, Jerry, which is fine, which is fine. But I'm just saying... You're saying sim racers are slow. Well, that's absolutely not true. <laughs> it just depends on the sim racer you're playing, I guess. But uh, yeah, they don't suck. Um, what happens is, is if you're an automotive enthusiast or a petrol head like myself, and you're a car nut, okay, this is, this is car pornography when you see. So when you see a game like Gran Turismo or Forza or uh, Ferrari, Trophio on the PlayStation 2 or Test Drive uh, Ferrari on the PS3. These are games that I absolutely adore. Now, I like arcade racers as well, but it wasn't until I played uh, Forza Motorsport, the original, on the Xbox, the original Xbox, and I remember being blown away by that. I'm like, wow, so this is what a sim racer is? I'm like, wow, you can actually... Tinker with the motor, the transmission, the camber, the suspension. I was like, man, it's almost hard to go back to to an arcade racer after playing this. So, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that sim racers suck. I, I I just think that if you're not an automotive enthusiast or a car enthusiast, then uh, your mileage will vary, right? If you if you're not into the sport of tennis, then you're probably not going to like a tennis simulator either, right? It goes on and on. You know, if you're not into uh, navigation or aerospace or airplanes or anything that's got to do with planes in the sky, uh, aviation, like I said, uh, you may not be a fan of Microsoft Flight Simulator, right? But then you got someone like Master System Marceau. He used to f fly fighter jets, and, and that guy likes. Microsoft Flight Simulator, so I totally get it. But I wouldn't go out there and be like, Mike, Microsoft Flight Simulator absolutely sucks. No. <laughs> it's just there's different strokes for different folks, right? So, yeah, we'll move on from that one. And the next one we have on the list here is fifth, fifth generation doesn't hold up. So, yeah, I would, I would not agree with this statement. I think the statement is kind of a half-truth. Um, when you're talking about the fifth generation, it's more the Nintendo 64 that doesn't hold up. Those games play awful, they look awful, they sound awful. It's the N64 from the fifth generation that doesn't hold up. However, I hate including the Saturn on this because not too many people played it back in the day and it's very niche. But the Saturn and especially the Sony PlayStation hold up really well in the year 2023. I would even, and I've already talked about this before on the channel, I would even argue 
that the PS1 holds up better than the PS2. Looking at a PlayStation 1 game in the year 2023, it's almost refreshing to see those rough pixels in the game. Again, it's the N64 that has that whatever it is, the, the, the shading where it's all blurry. Maybe in period that looked okay, but it doesn't look good in 2023. But the PS, the PS1, those games look really good. And the catalog of games on the PS1, it's incredible that those games hold up really well. And just to give you an example here, um, yeah, I've got Gran Turismo. Now this is the second one on the PS1 double disc. This holds up really well, really well. So yeah, I don't like the argument that fifth gen doesn't hold up well. I think that's exclusive to the N64, if I'm being honest with you. And I think I think a lot of people would agree. So the next uh, talking point they have is Konami versus Capcom. And Wes and Robert are saying that uh, Konami, uh, the games, at least from way back in the day, like the 90s, like the NES and the Super NES, uh, hold up much better than uh, Capcom games. So I know for a fact that these two guys at one point in time got flown out to like a VIP private party, all expenses paid by Konami. So you seriously going to take these guys' opinions seriously on this topic? Like they're already, they've been bought and paid for, okay? Their opinion has been skewed. They're hoping that somebody from Konami is watching their video so they'll get flown out to another event. Let's be honest here. Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't say either company is better or worse than the other. That's a kind of a stupid argument, to be honest with you. Both Konami and Capcom had incredible games, uh, back in the nineties. They did. Um, the only thing I can really think of up, off the top of my head that really blew my mind was when I played Silent Hill 2. I'm like, yeah, this is much better than Resident Evil. But even so, that's saying a lot because Resident Evil is a really good game as well. So the argument of, you know, which company is better, Konami or Capcom, that's that's kind of a stupid argument, to be honest with you. If you're talking about those old retro games, I, I, I can't really say that one is better than the other. You know, it, it, it's, it's just a stupid argument. What, do you, what, do you, what are you comparing? Are you comparing Castlevania to Mega Man? You can't really compare those two. Yet both both series are like, exceptionally well they hold up exceptionally well right uh, it's kind of a weird argument and then they had the argument of um mario versus sonic now with this one here i guess maybe to an extent i will agree i've said that for like the longest time um that the sonic the hedgehog games they don't hold up as well as the mario games especially uh when you're talking about modern sonic games but <laughs> If we're just talking about the original 16-bit games, you know, Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles, those are really good games. They are. But it's hard to really compare those to like a, a Super Mario World, as an example, or a Super Mario 3. The one thing Sonic had going for it was it had better graphics, and the speed was really good. But Mario had uh, deeper gameplay, if, if that's even possible. It did. <laughs> You could play Super Mario World for like weeks on end. Okay, there's so much to do in it. Whereas with Sonic the Hedgehog, uh, never mind the steep difficulty of those games, but there was limited replayability. It was just like, you know, whatever it was, three lives and you're dead and back to the start. Uh, or if you were fortunate enough to see those games all the way through, uh, you were likely doing it in one sitting, right? Because there was no safe states which Super Mario World had, and uh, was it Super Mario Brothers 3 had that as well, I believe. So, and Super Mario Brothers 2, really good game, and obviously the original Super Mario Brothers. So, yeah, I'll, I'll agree with gaming off the grid on, on that argument. Now, their last argument was uh, Mario 64 is a shitty game. Well, these guys are from the younger generation. I don't know how old these guys are. I think maybe they're in like their mid to late 20s. Maybe their early 30s. 
But take it from someone who was there back in the day. Uh, I remember going, I've talked about, I've told this story before, but back in 95, I went to a, uh, uh, a theme park in Montreal in uh, the summer of 1995. And when I went to the theme park, I went to the arcade area and outside the arcade, Nintendo had this huge N64 uh, booth set up where the consoles were there. And you could walk right up to the console, and I had not seen the N64 yet in person, and they had Mario 64 hooked up. Now, when that game, in period, when when I saw that game, that was mind-blowing. That, that game looked better than, like, anything we had seen before um, on a console or probably even in the arcade. We had never seen a character be, being able to run around like that, um, being able to jump into the transparent water and be able to swim around. Uh, walking up to the castle when you first see the castle jumping through the paintings the game had like cd quality audio coming out of a cartridge it was just a really impressive game the problem is is when you're looking at it through a pair of uh 2023 glasses you're looking at it through modern times yeah of course it's not going to hold up well obviously uh we've been spoiled uh rotten with modern releases. So yeah, I wish Nintendo would remake Mario 64 because I honestly think out of all the 3D Marios that I've played, I haven't played the most modern ones or the newest one that was on the Switch Odyssey. But I, I would almost argue that Mario 64 is, is the best 3D Mario of all time. I had the Odyssey, or not the Odyssey, I had the, um, well I still do, I've got Mario Galaxy for the Wii and I don't have Galaxy 2. But I think Mario 64 is better than those games. And uh, even Mario Sunshine. I, I would say Mar Mario 64 is better than Mario Sunshine. So, yeah, to say that Mario 64 is a terrible game is just an absolutely ridiculous hot take. Um, again, you have to take into consideration um, how the game was uh, looking in period. Okay, it's not fair to look at the game now and, and say that it sucks. I, I don't think that's really a fair assessment i don't i still don't think the game sucks it's a good game it just could use um probably a, a remake so yeah i don't agree with that hot take either but that's it i'm gonna cut it off there um just wanted to talk about gaming off the grids ridiculous video ridiculous hot takes uh, especially the konami versus capcom argument how can you even uh suggest that konami is better when you've been flown out to a private uh event Pay all expenses paid for by Konami. Not a good luck. Not a good luck. <laughs> and to say that sim racers suck. Yeah, that is so typical. That is so typical of a spoiled kid that lives in the suburbs that drives an SUV. Probably a hybrid. Probably a crossover. His girlfriend probably made him buy it. Oh my god. <laughs> it's probably an automatic. Of course you guys don't like sim racers. Oh my god. So that's going to do it. That's going to do it for my five hot takes. What did you guys think of these hot takes? What did you think of Gaming Off the Griddles hot takes? Let me know in the comments below. Hopefully I ruffled some feathers. Hopefully you guys, if you're watching this, uh, Gaming Off the Grid, uh, Roberto and Wes, hopefully you're not taking this too seriously, all in good fun. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good night.